Today we're gonna scan the inside of this Sprinter van, or it's a Ford Transit, with this Einscan HX 3D scanner. Now we're using this because it's the best for large format, and it has multiple scanning modes, from blue laser to the structured light, and generally for large objects, this is absolutely the best handheld scanner you can get. We do a lot of high temperature 3D printing here at Vision Mine, and we sell complete systems to businesses. So if you need that, we're here to help you along with the 3D scanners, which we also have a full lineup of these. If you're wondering which one you need for your project, give us a call, we're here to help. We're gonna go ahead and get started. First thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit the button once. That's gonna give me a preview. I'm gonna make sure my exposure's pretty good. It's getting data. We're good. I'm just gonna hit the button again, and we're gonna get going. So I am just gonna go up here like this. Oops, lost tracking, so I'm gonna start over a little bit. I'm just gonna go straight up, watching my screen relatively, looks like I'm too far away. I wanna make sure I maintain my distance, my scanning distance with my arm. And I'm just gonna keep going all the way around here. And it's picking up data pretty darn good. You know, the, the fully optimal way, if I really wanted the best results, I would put markers all over this thing and use the blue laser mode. But frankly, for most applications, you don't need to do that. That would just be a lot more data and a little bit easier scanning sometimes because the lasers work really good for tracking. There we go, coming all the way down to here. Let me get a little bit of this thing. Let me just get behind there. Why not? Go down. And I'm gonna come across the bumper here. Oh, I'm too far away. Gotta get a little closer. And I'm gonna come down, go all the way around, get these little latch points and everything. And if anywhere that I want more data, if it's not getting enough data, I can go back and it'll pick up more data. So that's not an issue. But you can see I'm already back over to the other side and we just got that entire thing worked out. And so I'm just gonna maybe get a little more in some areas. We want to add to the bumper a little bit. Let's get that trailer hitch in there. And the other thing is I can scan this in multiple sections and that's actually what I'm going to do. There is a thing called volumetric accuracy. And what that means, the further I get from the first starting point of the scan, then volumetrically, the further away exponentially the accuracy goes down. So if I were to go 20 meters in one direction back around, it might be off by a little bit. So scanning in six to 10 foot sections is optimal. Plus, it's a lot less stressful on the hardware in your computer that you're using. So I'm just gonna look at this. Great, that's good outline. Generate the point clouds. That's gonna get rid of all the extra data and get you your official point cloud with the accurate data. Usually this takes anywhere from 10 to 35 seconds on the Einscan HX. I have noticed that it tends, to, the data it gives processes faster than something like some of the less expensive scanners, significantly faster. So it's a huge time saver. All right, and I've got this. Now, uh, let's say I wanna get a little bit of the interior. I'm just gonna hit project group. I'm gonna say new project. I'm gonna use the same settings, but I could change them if I wanted to add markers or something like that. Hit apply. And now we're in a fresh scan. So now I'm just gonna maybe hop up in here. I'm gonna start with a feature that I had seen in the previous scan, and that'll help the alignment go a lot better. So I'm just gonna start on that same spot on the opposite side, because I know I have that. I'm gonna get that whole feature really good. I'm gonna step up in here and start getting the other sides. So here we go. Very nice, very nice. Go up into here. Let's come up and get this vent. This is doing an incredible job just tracking all these relatively flat spaces. Everything does have a bit of a curve in here. And for those of you wondering, we will uh, we do have plans to get a stripped out Sprinter van in here that we can actually scan so you can see what the interior with paint and stuff like that would work like. Uh, it's a little bit different, but very similar. Let's get this cup holder. Maybe you're making a speaker box for the cup holder. Maybe you're making an actual speaker box. This is a great way. We've got a lot of clients making custom speaker boxes and they scan the client's trunk and then they, you know, cat out the speaker box. Now I'm having trouble here a little bit with the tracking because it seems like the window is reflecting some of that data. So I'm just gonna come around. Now I can always come back down to this cup holder here 
I'm gonna come up and continue to get the window frame. All right, cool. Connect that over there. Uh, if you're if you've done scanning in the past and uh, you get kind of frustrated with it, this is this is real. We're not doing movie magic here. This is how easy the scanner works. It, things have gotten a lot better over the last few years. <laughs> so I'll just keep coming back. Let me get all this. All right, I'll get this one. Let me get some of the ceiling. Stay back up in there. I'll just get some ceiling for why not, right? All right, go back to the cup holder. He knows where it's at. And then for some of this black texturing, it's not getting as much data, so I can actually raise the brightness if I wanted to. But uh, for now, let me go back over to this spot. I'm just gonna get this wheel well. It's doing a pretty darn good job for this being just flat black plastic. So the whole thing about black is it ref or absorbs all the light and scanners rely on reflected light to get the triangulation data from the two cameras that are seeing the light that is projecting. So black and dark objects generally have a really hard time and on more difficult parts, the lasers are what makes that super easy. And we got a lot of other videos showing the lasers and we'll have more in the future as well. So make sure you subscribe and like this video if you like this content and you want more of it. But also leave a comment and let us know what you want us to scan next. All right, I'm gonna call that scan good. I'm gonna move this table back a little bit. All right, so now we're here and I can just generate the point clouds again. Wait another 15 seconds. So you know, there's a lot of applications for this. There's the, all the van life stuff. Maybe you're a UPS and you want to deck out your Sprinter vans with custom shelving and things like that. If you're doing a fleet of vehicles, or maybe you got a few ve different vehicles, scanning them as opposed to using measuring tapes and all sorts of stuff like that is so much faster. We're actually gonna use a measuring tape here in just a second so we can show you the accuracy. All right, good, we got that. Now we can show both project groups and they're not aligned, obviously. So we're gonna go into the alignment menu. I'm just gonna select the first scan, select the second scan, and I'm gonna keep it on feature alignment. And uh, let's see if it works. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Most of the time it does. And this time it worked great. Perfect, right there, first shot. I love it. All right, so I'll hit next. Now those are grouped and aligned. And if I select both of the same color, you can see I've got most of this thing going in mesh model. Now that's what's going to take it and turn it into a STL, an OBJ, a P3, etc. A point cloud you can save it out as, uh, but this will make an actual mesh. Look at that. Here we go. So this is the STL. Now we're missing data in certain areas, but I went really fast. If you want pure data, you just got to spend a little more time on it. And I'm going to go over here to the basic measuring tools. This is something we haven't shown off much. I'm going to hit confirm and I'm going to go to the measurement tab. I'm gonna select measurement tools. They're very simple measurement tools, but it's a good way to verify things. So I'm just gonna select like right there on that edge of that little thing to right over there on that edge. And it's telling me that's 1,365 millimeters. So about 136.5 centimeters. So uh, Alonzo in with the tape measure. I'll go ahead and hold it on this end. And I'll start right around that point where that was. Go ahead and pull it out a little bit more. There we go, and as you can see, about 136. 136, we got the 130, 1, 6.5-ish, so it's pretty darn spot on. That's gonna be good enough for most projects, but these scanners do go down to point distances of 0 0.05 millimeters if you really need it to. It's important to note because these are reverse engineering 3D scanners. There's a lot you can do with them. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments or email us, or better yet, give us a phone call. All we do is set up businesses with the right scanner or 3D printer for their application. If we don't have it, we won't sell it to you. So if you got questions, hit us up. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching. Have a positive rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next video. All right, guys, today we're going to scan a transit van.